Hi all, in this video we will be seeing about surfactant. So how this surfactant is secreted and it is how it is spread across the alveolar surface and also what are the functions of the surfactant and what are the factors which are affecting the surfactant. So now we will see what is surfactant. So this surfactant it is the surface acting material. Surface acting material. So this it reduces the surface tension. This surfactant which lines the epithelium of the alveoli in the lungs, it is called as the pulmonary surfactant. It decreases the surface tension of the alveolar membrane. And what is from where does this pulmonary surfactant secreted? It is secreted from the two types of cells. First, it is the type 2 alveolar epithelial cells. So this type 2 alveolar epithelial cells are present for about 5%. So this it is also called as granular pneumocytes. So it is also called as granular pneumocytes present for about 5% each of the epithelial cells and these cells it has a characteristic feature that is it has the presence of the microvilli on their alveolar surface. So this is the special feature of the cell and this cell it has the lamellar bodies. So this lamellar bodies it st stores the surfactants. So further it is. So this lamellar body stores the surfactant and it is given out through into the alveolar epithelium. So next cell is the clara cells. So this clara cells. So these are situated in the bronchioles. So this clara cells are also called as the bronchiolar exocrine cells. Exocrine cells. So what is this surfactant contains? So this surfactant it is a lipoprotein molecule. So this it is a lipoprotein complex. It is formed by the lipids. So the lipids mainly the phospholipids. And the proteins, and finally the ions. The ions, it is mainly the calcium ions. And coming to the phospholipids, this phospholipids present mainly are the, and the major phospholipid which is present is dipalmitoyl phosphatidyl choline. So, this dipalmitoyl phosphatidyl choline. Phosphatidyl choline. So, this is thing but DPPC. So this is the major phospholipids present in the surfactant. So other lipids are the tri triglycerides and the phosphatidyl glycerol. So coming to the proteins. The proteins which are present are in the surfactant are spe specific surfactant proteins. There are four main types of sur surfactant proteins that is four main types that is SP a, SPB, SPA, SPB, SPC, and SPD. And among this, surfactant, pro, surfactant protein B and C are hydrophobic. And this A and C, so these two are hydrophilic. So this hydrophilic and hydrophobic, these plays a major action as a surfactant. So, this surfactant proteins are the vital part of this surfactant whereas without the proteins, the surfactant is inactive. So, it cannot function effectively and it cannot lower the surface tension. So, now coming to the formation of the surfactant. How does this surfactant form? What, is, what are we going to see? Formation of the surfactant. So, the cells which we have seen that is the type 2 alveolar epithelial cells and the clara cells. So these both cells it contains the special type of membrane bound organelle called as lamellar bodies. So this lamellar bodies so this mainly stores the surfactant. So these forms intracellular source of the surfactant. This lamellar bodies it contains the it contains phospholipids and the surfactant proteins. So these it are so both are it is synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum 
and it is stored in the lamellar bodies and by the means of exocytosis. So by the means of exocytosis, these are the ph phospholipids and the surfactant proteins are expelled out and it is released into the surface of the lining of the alveol or alveoli and here in the presence of the surfactant proteins and calcium both calcium and the surfactant proteins and the phospholipids so all these three it is arranged in a lattice so it is arranged like a lattice or the meshwork pattern so this is called as tubular myelin and this tubular myelin is further converted into the surfactant which spreads over the surface so this forms a film over the entire surface of the alveoli so this formation of this film of the entire surface of the alveoli it is mainly done by the action of calcium and the phosphatidyl glycerols so these two plays an important role in spreading of this over the entire surface so now the most of the surfactant it is reabsorbed into the type 2 epithelial type 2 alveolar epithelial cells and here it is catabolized into proteins uh, uh, catabolized products are again it is in the laminar bodies it is recycled now coming to the factors necessary for the formation of and spreading of the surfactant so we, we have already seen for spreading we need the calcium and the phosphatidyl glycerols so now how this is formed so mainly it is formed by the formation of the tubular myelin so this tubular myelin requires the diphosphatidyl dipalmitoyl phosphatidyl choline so that is dptc and it, it requires the phosphatidyl glycerol and the hydrophobic proteins so what is this hydrophobic proteins that is the sp B and SPC. So these are very important for the formation of the surfactant. So now here the glucocorticoid plays a major role in formation of the surfactant. So other factors which increase the formation of the surfactant are the thyroid hormones. So this thyroid hormones it increases the size and the number of the inclusion bodies in the type 2 cells. So here the surfactant is increased and also this glucocorticoids it accelerates and uh, the maturation of the surfactant and the factors which decrease the surfactant are first is the long term inhalation of the oxygen so 100% oxygen this 100% oxygen it is the long term inhalation is mainly seen in the during the cardiac surgeries so patient is under 100% oxygen and next in conditions where there is occlusion of the main bronchus or in situations where one of the pulmonary artery it is occluded and also in cases of cigarette smoking and when the vagus is cut from this so these are the conditions where the surfactant protection is reduced now coming to the functions of the surfactant functions first function of the surfactant is in the reduction of the surface tension so this surface tension reduction prevents the collapsing tendency of the lungs. So this is the main function of the surfactant. So how does this surfactant uh, collapsing tendency prevented? So here the surfactant attacks by the mechanism where it has two. That is the hydrophobic and the hydrophilic. So it has hydrophilic and hydrophobic so this hydrophilic part it is dissolved in water and the remaining part this spreads over the surface of the water in the alveoli so by this action the surface tension is reduced here surfactant protein B and C plays a major role so the next role of this SP a and D is the it helps in defensing defense action so these both it helps in the destruction of the bacteria and viruses by the method of optionization so hence these proteins also control the formation of the inflammatory mediators 
So this is one of the function. The next function is the this surfactant it is responsible for the stabilization of the alveoli. So here we have the tendency to withstand the collapse. Next function it is it helps in the inflation of the lungs in the knee. So we have already known that the breathing starts that is the respiration starts only when after the birth. So before that in the fetus stage there is no respiration. So there only the exchange of the ions takes place through the placenta between the fetus blood and the mother's blood. So only when the newborn is born, the respiration takes place. This respiration here, the respiratory centers are activated by the presence of this hypoxia and the hypercapnia. So once the respiration starts, the lung expands and collapses. So this collapse it is prevented by the presence of the surfactant. So this is the another main function of the surfactant. And there was a recent question based on this. So when this surfactant is deficient in newborn so it leads to a condition called infant respiratory distress syndrome this infant respiratory distress syndrome is also known as hyaline membrane disease so there was a question in the recent NEET 2024 paper about this adult res infant respiratory distress syndrome so this it is a serious condition in newborns that the surfactant is deficient so the lung cannot function compared to the normal infants so usually this it is uh, produced a surfactant it is produced uh, in the third month of in fetus life so when that when the child is born before the formation of the surfactant system is complete there is a condition of this surfactant deficiency so it keeps uh, the infant from and the lungs from being collapsed but due to the pro prolonged immaturity of the epithelial sodium channels the chloride is secreted and resulting in the deficiency of this surfactant and here um, the it has high this child it has high surface tension high surface tension uh, so there are some areas uh, of the alveoli just collapse and there are some patchy atelic axis where the patient who undergo cardiac surgery where the oxygen the pump oxygen is used so the pulmonary circulation is interrupted these are the application aspect of this surfactant now we'll start filling the workbook so this surfactant it is the pulmonary surfactant is a surface active material lining the alveolar epithelium so this it reduces the surface tension and it is produced by the type 2 pneumocytes and the clear cells after 20 weeks of gestational age Coming to the components, it contains the phospholip where nearly 75% is made up of this dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine. So it is the major component. And next is the neutral lipids like cholesterol and its esters that is present about 13% and 8% is the proteins. So we have already seen it's specific surfactant proteins A, B, S, P, A, B, C and D. The carbohydrates and fatty acids and calcium is about 2%. We have seen the ion that is mainly the calcium. Next, coming to the function of the surfactant. It decreases the surface tension, it stabilizes the alveolar size and also increases the lung compliance. It also plays an important role in the inflation of the lungs during the birth. It also plays a role in host defense within the lungs against infection and the inflammation. It prevents transit transudation of the fluids and this deficiently it, it leads to infant that is ARDS that is adult respiratory distress syndrome or the infant respiratory distress syndrome this infant respiratory distress syndrome is also called as hyaline membrane disease so mainly this surfactant deficiency is the IRDS and next there is increased susceptibility susceptibility for the bacterial and the viral infection because the surfactant has a defensing action that is by the opsonization through surfactant proteins A and E. So once it is deficient, so there is it is more susceptible to the infection. 
Next, coming to the artificial ventilation. So, mechanical, it is by two methods. First is the drinker's method. And next is the ventilation method. And manually, it is by the Holger Nielsen method and the mouth to mouth breathing. So, this is all about surfactant. I hope this video was useful. Happy learning. Thank you.